Musical instruments have been collector's items throughout history. The intimate connection between an instrument and the sounds of the past, as well as the desire to own something rare and precious, inspires people to collect them. But how do collectors know they're buying the real thing? As you look around the galleries at St. Cecilia's Hall, you will find one instrument on display which fooled a collector. This triple manual harpsichord, which is smothered in gold and decorated in an opulent Rococo style, is not what it seems. The extravagant decoration hides an instrument which was created for the collector's market by an unscrupulous antiques dealer, Leopoldo Frangiolini, a fraudster who sold faked and altered instruments to unsuspecting collectors in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Although the decoration and design are an elaborate ruse, there are parts of an original 17th century harpsichord buried underneath the layers of paint and additional wood. The original instrument was made in 1627 by Stefano Bolcioni in Florence, Italy, and had only one keyboard, which we call a manual. Not much is known about the history of that harpsichord, but in the late 19th century, it found its way to the Florentine workshop of Frangiolini. In his hands, the instrument was dramatically altered. It was given two additional keyboards, more strings were added, the case was redecorated, and the harpsichord was put on a new stand. This newly created instrument would have been an incredibly rare example of a triple manual harpsichord, because most harpsichords only have one or two manuals. An instrument that would be the crown jewel in someone's collection. There is a picture of this newly created old instrument in Frangiolini's catalog from around 1908. If you look closely, you will see that it looks completely different to the way it does today. Most likely, this means that Frangiolini's 1908 version didn't sell. So, rather than a meet defeat, he just altered the instrument again this time using gold paint and decorating the outside of the case with paintings of musicians and animals, adding a lush pastoral scene to the inside of the lid, and he changed the stand yet again. In 1911, Frangiolini's son Luigi brought the harpsichord to London to sell. Why didn't Frangiolini bring the instrument himself? Well, he had just been convicted for fraud back in Italy which certainly put a tarnish on his reputation, and his son made claims that he had died, which was just not true. Either way, the new, elaborately decorated case on this instrument served its purpose. It disguised the harpsichord from the previous version, which hadn't sold, and it distracted the buyer from its true nature, that of a fake. Frangelini eventually did die in 1920, and over the course of his career, he sold countless fraudulent instruments to collectors all over the world, many of which have ended up in museums. You might wonder how so many people were tricked by this dealer. Well, scholarship into the history and development of musical instruments was a relatively new field at the time, and collectors were eager to own their own piece of history and had money to spend. So probably they just didn't know any better.